And there okay, we go. I guess here we are. I got confused because did you add the countdown before? I did add the countdown before. Yeah, that was on the the that post. I'm going to do all that in post. Ah, uh, here I am breaking that third wall. All right, so uh, <laughs> it's it's you know what I'm saying. The fourth wall. Is it fourth wall or third wall? Oh, it's God. the fourth wall. Here I am breaking the fourth wall. Right. Um, yeah. Now you're making me doubt myself. I'm pretty sure it's the fourth wall. Let me Google it later. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here we are. All right. Uh, intro episode episode zero before all the madness start off started off right yeah francis it's david um man right how long uh, it's so crazy to every guy here right dave like how long ago have we talked about this shit well we we've, we've been talking about doing the podcast for about two weeks and we just jumped right into it but since we well we used to work together at a i always refer to it when i tell people a skateboard shop same. I was the warehouse manager and senior buyer for a web retailer that specialized in streetwear and skate wear. It's I've, beautiful down to a T. And I did computer stuff there. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I, you know, we started hanging out and we eventually started talking about things that we had in common, just a lot of different bands and music and stuff that we're into. Really appreciate you showing me Ghost. Oh, dude, love it. Yeah, I mean, and then we, you know, discover we both like Insane Clown Posse, <laughs> and we both like uh, Taco Bell, and we both like Fago, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we have in common, you know. It, it, these are really things that I feel like all people should have in common. The good people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, we, as you recall, we said that we were going to have we called it Wrestling Day, and we were going to get together, and we were going to. Uh, get burgers and watch a bunch of scary wrestling and well, because you have such a fucking crazy amount of like okay so when i first came over to your place you have like the figure i didn't want to cut you off but right you gotta no, just give context you gotta give context to it right we thought of this wrestling day and uh you were just like oh come by grab burgers or whatever and i was like all right bet we're gonna fire up the fucking network or i don't even was the network even around i don't know what the fuck we're gonna do um, and I get to your place and you just have like a library of just like physical media of wrestling. I, you know, I, I downloaded a bunch of stuff. I have DVDs and just, you know, I mean, I'm a collector and collectors collect, you know what I mean? Um, but we, we kind of curated, um, you know, like four hours or so of just the bloodiest wrestling that we could find. Um, but for the, largely, it was mainstream. Yep. Um, and after that, we kind of started discussing that we were going to go and see some local shows. And we went to one company, and the show was okay. Then we went to a, another company, and the show was bigger. But uh, well, it was the same company, but another show. Yeah. Um, and then we did the the third final one with that. That was the one that was at the temple, right? Yep. And then. After that, somebody that I worked with um, was a wrestler, and they said that they um, wrestled in a league that was. Uh, would you say that the that was downriver? Yeah, it was definitely downriver. Okay, um, so he, he was like, "You should come and see the show. There's a bunch of wild shit that happens." Um, so we started going to shows there, and we saw our first death match. And that's fuck. That was what three three years ago. Almost right, maybe longer. Four years. I want to say it was 2018. Yeah. So, yeah, we were hooked, right? Like the first time we got a a butcher knife, you know, kicked at us is. Well, we is, had kind of a list of things that we wanted to see, and a lot of the things that we were talking about that we wanted to see in person, we didn't think that we were going to be able to see them at least in the United States. Like, yeah, the no rope barbed wire. Um, you know, I've been to indie shows. Like, I mean, believe me, I've been to a fucking <laughs> lot of indie shows and I've never seen barbed wire. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we saw, and on the first night we saw barbed wire. We saw, was that the bed of knives that we saw that night? Yeah, that was, yeah, that, that you, you, <laughs> it got kicked towards us. You were like, oh shit, you jumped back and instinctively I reached for it. Um, and then the referee kicked it away. 
Uh, it came really fucking close. The guy that landed on it, I'm not even sure who it was that landed on it, but he landed on it and jumped up and then was just like, fuck, and just kicked it. And it came so close to, I mean, the motherfucker kicked the knife at us. You know what I mean? Eh. But we saw tubes that night. And then, obviously, the, the weirdest thing, we saw the mummy. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> the fucking mummy came out. And I was like, oh, God, God, I'm never going to another indie company again, you know? It's it's the only time we've ever seen that mummy, too. Kind of breaks my heart a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'd like to think he's become, like, a lot bigger, right? Like, that was, like, Akira or something. Like, it's what I tell myself. Like, it's somebody in, in a mummy costume. I think that I think uh, it was a real mummy, and he's moved on to other mummy things. But I think he's still a mummy. <laughs> so, all right. So, that just kind of, like, you know, kind of, that just kind of gives us, like, this is, this is where the seed was kind of planted, right? Like, that's where we thought we wanted to kind of like shit we want to keep doing this right and um you have the background in audio visual right yes your your company and i have a uh, a small history with podcasting right being a a part in a a co-producer of a, a fairly large sneaker podcast right i'm a sneaker guy it is what it is yeah i'm not going to bog down this podcast with that but um it, it just it just kind of happened um this isn't reinventing the wheel right like yeah um definitely you know uh, uh there's other podcasts out there and we're just kind of adding our own voice to it right locally um well, I'm sorry go ahead oh no I, I was gonna say the the whole reason that we were talking about wanting to do this is to enhance our hobby you know we're mm-hmm. we're going and we're seeing the shows we're you know, every show that we go to, we're, we're acquiring more experience, you know what I mean? And in, in that, the genre of deathmatch wrestling and, and largely indie wrestling too, you know? Um, yeah. But I just, I want to have a good time, you know? Yeah, I, no, I know this, other people this... do it professionally and stuff. I'm just trying to have a great time. We are the furthest thing from professionals, right? Like I'm sitting in front of a window, <laughs> like I'm a car alarm away from going off or a, a, a police siren driving by. My cat's trying to get my office. attention right now too. So <laughs> we're, not, we're not professionals, right? We're never going to claim to be it. Um, but you know, that doesn't take away from people that do do this genre, right? Like locally we have the the guys from pro wrestling edge, right? Right. They've been doing it for two years. They, the entire, they got the entire Midwest on lock, right? Got a chance to talk to those guys recently. Um, and they do a big, right. Um, if you somehow got to us right as a listener and never check them out and you want to just like hear more about indie shows and sports, right? They do sp- regular sports shit too. I don't know anything about sports. Uh, yeah. Dave, you, you, are you like some kind of basketball? No. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not us. Right. But those guys, they do it all. They've been at it for like two years. Right. This is right. We're, we're not, no, like they, they got that shit on lock. Um, and the dude from down on the right from faces in uh in fields another you know good podcast yes we're just trying to add our own commentary like you said have a good time um and uh if we get stood up one more time by another wrestler we may just stop <laughs> so <laughs> but but also i mean and and this is like a shoot style you know we said if this if anything happens that's going to make us not want to follow our hobby, you know, which is the, the death match stuff. I would rather stop doing the podcast altogether. You know, yeah, 100%. like so, I, I don't want anything to ruin what I love, which is wrestling, you know? Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, like what, you know, what, what do we want out of this? Right. We want to get a chance to talk to like cool people that we genuinely like. Right. And, you know, there, there's events that we have questions for, but also, I mean, like we when we talk about, you know, like what kind of person becomes a deathmatch wrestler? You know, I mean, what what motivates them? You know, like, I mean, some some people got to start off and be like, I, I want to be Rey Mysterio. You know, I want to be yeah. um, I don't think anybody ever sets off and and, and said, I, I want to be Mick Foley. But now we have a whole generation of people that legitimately want to be Mick Foley. They want to be Terry Funk. They want to be Abdullah the Butcher. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. I mean, you, you said it right. Like, and this is our chance to kind of uh, talk to those people, right? Get that chance to talk to them, hear that like story and like firsthand, right? You, we can, we can Google all we want, but uh, hearing it from those people was just, you know, it, it got me excited, right? Like fourth wall, third wall, we're going to figure that out. I'm going to get it right eventually. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> you know, this is our intro episode zero, but it's not the first episode we've recorded. Right. And that was an amazing episode like personally for a first episode hearing some of those extra stories that you don't that you don't see on wiki that you don't see on cage match just being able to hear that firsthand like that's what this is all about and if this shit doesn't work out and we only upload like 10 episodes it was fun <laughs> yeah absolutely I, hey I'm, I'm already having a good time you know what i mean but i mean like you and i've been going to these shows we've been talking about how long we've been into wrestling for i i, I gotta know how long have you, I mean, we've talked about so many different things, but I don't think you've ever told me when you first got into wrestling. Dude, so I actually started thinking about that after your conversation last night with our first guest. I'm not going to ruin it because I'm not sure how these are going to get uploaded. Uh, but it I, it's funny enough, like I remember um, my grandfather, because I grew up broke as fuck. Um, my grandfather and I go into a Salvation Army and I had this very distinct memory. and. I found a Hulk Hogan like robe, like a silk wrestling robe as a child and a Hulk Hogan plush. And it, that might have been like my first introduction. And I fuck, I must have been like five or six. Right. I didn't know what the hell anything was. Um, and I'm, you know, 34 now. So uh, it, it's been a love hate relationship. Right. Like uh, I quickly became a degenerate that like loved ECW and uh yep. it kind of spiraled from there right like i was heavy into the japanese stuff right the second i could uh get my hands on those dvds at like fye or sam goodies i was buying that shit, right um and shout out to you right you like i i i uh i you've taken them into your custody right i had no more space for physical media in my apartment I had oh, a couple yeah. of DVDs and you took them off my hands you know what? I uh, I know it's super unprofessional to, to jump up and go and get something really quick, but I gotta I have to get this real quick to show this. <laughs> so he took it right. Um, he took the shit. It was awesome. Look at that. Yeah, see, that's uh, so he sold me. me. Uh, CZW scarred. I don't even remember buying that shit. And but hold I on had a And this is the other one. Yeah, the FMW King of the Death match. Fuck and yeah, look at that, man. I bought those shits at, like I said, Harmony House or Sam Goody or FYE. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I could say anything at this point because none of those stores aren't around. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it, it was, it was kind of awesome, right? It was, I've always, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, like wrestling is about storytelling and I get that, but it's just something crazy about like the actual like monsters in it, right? We talk about like characters oh, and yeah. Dude, like Leatherface, right? Amazing. Yeah. Mr. Pogo, amazing, right? These are deathmatch, like Japanese deathmatch guys. And uh I don't know, it was just it was just something I was like just into. And fuck, American Deathmatch came on my radar and fuck. Just kind of took it from there. My my wrestling interest, it goes like I mean, I'm old as hell, and it goes back so, like super far. My neighbor behind that lived behind me, he brought over. We used to play video games all the time, you know, and just beat video games. We'd be you know work on a video game for a week, then go and get another one, renting video games from the video store. And he brought over um, the NES version of WrestleMania, and I'd never seen wrestling at that point. So this is putting me at about 1988. I'm like seven ish, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, you know, I, I, I was just uh, blown away. I ended up watching all, you know, wrestling on Saturday morning. And then my grandma, who used to babysit me, she came over to babysit me. And I asked her, I was like, do you know what wrestling is? And she said, oh, like Ric Flair. And I had never heard of Ric Flair before. And she was like, oh, she's like, I, I watch it later at night. She's like, we'll watch this. And it was Mama's Family <laughs> and then WCW. And then it would be um, Vicky the Robot. Do you know anything about that? Small Wonder? I'm going to I'm gonna have to Google that shit. It, then it would be like Small Wonder, and then it would be Glow, the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. 
and then roller derby and then monster trucks. Like my grandma was into some shit, you know? Um, but when I, you know, asked her, you know, so you watch this all the time, you know about this. She said that she used to take my mom and my aunts to uh, Cobo Hall back in the day when um, Dick the Bruiser, the Sheik, you know, Sabu's uncle, um, Bobo Brazil, Dick the Bruiser, the Sheik, those are the, the, the main ones that she talked about. Um, but I remember her describing the Sheik throwing fireballs at people. And that just kind of was like, that was in my head, you know? And from there, I ended up, I started watching WWF. And then I actually liked WCW, the NWA, a little bit more. Watched wrestling all through junior high, got made fun of in school because I would talk about wrestling all the time. I'd be like, somebody want to talk to me about Sting? And nobody wanted to talk to me about Sting. You I don't think I mean? anybody talked about Sting still. You're breaking my heart, dude. Sting's <laughs> my guy, man. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to catch so much heat for saying that. I have a, a handful of photos of me painted up like Sting. From a couple different eras. Shout out to you, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I, I actually stopped watching wrestling in 93. Um, and I actually remember the whole reason why. It was because of Doink the Clown. You know, I'm in high school now. And I saw Doink the Clown come out. And I said, yeah, I'm done with this shit right now. You know? And I didn't start watching wrestling again until 2000. And in 2000, I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was Daphne. I was waiting for my girlfriend to get off of work, flipping around the channels, and I saw Daphne, like, she was doing a skit with David Flair, and I heard somebody say something about the, you know, oh, he's a Flair, and I was like, oh my God, Ric Flair's kid, and from there, watched wrestling again, and I, I mean, I've stopped watching wrestling, but I always go back to it, and I mean, through high school, too, I would read, you know, WWF Matt Wrestling Magazine, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and see like all the guys in Japan, you know, like seeing, you know, I knew who Cactus Jack was, I knew who Terry Funk was, but I had no access to any of those tapes, you know? Yeah, no that's ever. what like I had a I had met Mick Foley when he first put his when he put his first book out. Uh he did a book sign and, and it was probably that's probably one of the first books I ever read. And it's a very short list, and I'll admit that, right? Um <laughs> You never told me you met Mick Foley. Yeah, I met him. He, he, I have an autographed book somewhere. You literally have never mentioned that to me. Yep, and Stone Cold. Okay. Um, really? So yeah, right, yeah. That's weird. <laughs> I have I have, I have the picture of Stone Cold somewhere too. Um, really? Yeah. I gotta see that now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when my mom took me to a Borders bookstore. Um, where he or meet Stone Cold. No, to, I don't. I don't think Stone Cold Creed either. Um, no, to meet Mick Foley. <laughs> okay, all right, right on. Um, and uh, I got his book signed. That was like the first time I had uh, kind of read about the shit in Japan. And this was like you know pre YouTube. Yeah. So there I go, giving my computer you know a million viruses on like Napster and Kazaa and LimeWire, looking for these crazy ass clips. You know, waiting four and a half days to. Uh, get a Backstreet Boy video by accident, right? Like that, that was my, that was my life. I, I know that you were into the JCW stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So you probably saw Strangle Mania then, right? Dude, yeah. I mean, legitimately, that was really the only place that you had access to that level of violence other than like ECW, you know? Yeah, well, that's what, like, if you look at like the Strangle Mania shit, like you're talking about, uh, the Japanese stuff that they had in there, and you're talking about sending away, like sending a money order for twenty four ninety nine to a random address. I was a fucking kid, like yeah. you know, like my, like I was gonna go to my mom and be like, "Hey, let me get you, let me get a money order, or let me write your credit card information on this fucking random envelope to mail off to somebody." Like, no. Did you ever do any tape trading though back in the day? Like, I mean, from like. Were you on like AIM and like you know talking like wrestling stuff with people? If I was on AIM, it was because I was again being a degenerate with my friends. So no, um, <laughs> I, I'm so like the tape trading thing is so. I'm in my 30s now, and I've just begun to grasp like that was a thing, and it's it, it's something I'm upset I missed because it sounds fucking awesome. Um, I, so I had a band that, you know, you, you know, of the, my band a little bit, um, we're mm -hmm. 
very mildly popular. But because of that, you know, I had, you know, we would talk about wrestling and people that would talk to us would talk about wrestling. Um, there was this kid and he, um, I can't even remember what his name is, but he was like, hey, can I send you some tapes? And he like made me like a, a mix of like ECW stuff. He made me a mix of like the Raven Tommy Dreamer feud. And it was like VCR copied to another VCR, you know, of like a, a VCR tape. I mean, it, it was like the shittiest quality, but, you know, to get a six hour tape of like fucking wrestling matches, you know what I mean? It was amazing. Like tra tape trading was the bomb back in the day. I'm so upset I missed that. Like, uh, that's so, and it's crazy because we're not like that far apart in age, but it just, it wasn't my circle, you know, like it just wasn't. I guess, but you know, when you guys were doing that shit, like my friends and I were getting ready to go to like the next Ozfest or Warp Tour or go see this random band. I was that kid, like so. But I mean, but legitimately, that that was the only way that you would have access to that type of wrestling because I mean, you couldn't find it anywhere. ECW was like the the worst at the time that you could find for violence. I mean, like, but CZW, yeah, XCW, none of that made its way towards us till like you know, the internet was in full swing. Yeah. And that's what, that's what's kind of crazy, right? As an adult now, and I have the internet at my fingertips and doing research for the show. And you're just like, you're just seeing all these, these promotions that were around at that time. Right. And they were doing the indie thing, right? Like with people that are still wrestling now. So like when we talked about <laughs> earlier on, just kind of talking to these people, we're, we want to talk to like anyone and everyone that's been doing this, right? We're not just talking about the the people that hit the scene a year ago, right? You know, we talked to a twenty year veteran just last night. Like, I mean, I'm I'm it, it's kind of like how I I'm looking at the wrestlers, kind of like how I look at bands. You know, when you look at somebody's discography, when we we're like our, our guest that was on last night, when we were looking at the, her body of work, I mean, it's massive. You know, and all the people that that are involved in it it's spider webs into all these other directions and i mean like how many other people came up in just one conversation you know yeah so that's what we want out of this right this is to get those stories to hear them ourselves to ask questions right um yeah they're shit i'm i'm i'd like to know anything and everything right like whatever i can ask i'm just gonna ask so like get this opportunity we created it and we're just gonna roll with it I mean, I'm um, I'm gonna be watching wrestling all weekend. You know, I'm there's a pay per view on tonight. I know you know about that, right? Sadika and Tremont. Yeah, like I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I've been looking forward to it all week. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm all about that, right? I'm gonna check that out. It's it's death match and in, in indies in general. Like I just feel kind of like brought something that WWE hasn't had or in so long. Like well you were you were pushing me for um God it was like a couple months to get the um IWTV. Dude yeah I feel like I need to get a fucking check from IWTV the amount of people I've put up on them. You, you really are actively like pitching that all the time. <laughs> like I I should just give you the money for the subscription because <laughs> I need to be getting a kickback or something, right? I have to be right. Like I've gotten like so many people like put up on it. And uh, if you're listening to this and you're still with us and you don't have IWTV, yeah, get yeah. IWTV. Because Francis gets a cut. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Fuck. I got to figure out who I do that to. Yeah. I'm, but, it, it's, it's got to happen sooner or later. <laughs> It's not. It's but it's so awesome, right? It's the, probably like the best ten bucks a month you could spend. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm beyond obsessed with wrestling at this point. You know, so I mean, I think that what we're doing is uh, definitely going in the the right direction. Yeah, I. Uh, dude, yeah, like I'm, I'm excited, right, to see uh, who we get, who we don't get. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are we going to get strong armed oh. <laughs> and uh i don't know i I've, i promised my wife i wasn't going to piss anyone off so i gotta stick to that okay we'll see i i don't i kind of don't think that's going to happen eventually 
But when you're talking about guests, you're already trying to paint me into a corner <laughs> with one of the guests. It's or, gonna be fun. I, I have to talk about uncomfortable stuff, but I mean, I I have no problem addressing. Maybe it. he'll maybe he'll flake. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so far, we're one for one for two, right? Yeah, half the guest said no. Um, well, no, no, the, no. One of the guests said yes, and then just you know, we're still waiting for him to hop into the call. <laughs> I just feel like he's going to be here, right? No? Uh, yeah. Especially when we looked at his calendar and he's double booked. So <laughs> He's not even at home. He's at a fucking show tonight. Then why did he tell us he was going to be with our podcast? Uh, man. But we, we, we have <laughs> some exciting people lined up, right? Yeah. Uh, we have we actually have our next guest already lined up and and booked, and that I think is going to be a good episode. I'm excited to talk to him. Um, I, I really hope everything works out. Uh, he was really nice guy. You know, I just yeah. I, I, I wish we could start saying who the people are, but I, I don't. I think we're we'd be jumping the gun. I just want to make sure nothing yeah. weird happens before between now and then. You know. Yeah. No, and I think uh, I think it's going to go well, you know. Um, and he committed for as much time as we want, so it, it, <laughs> I am. I I'm am gonna start gonna get, loading up the questions. Then you know, it's, it's going to be awesome. And then we have we have we have other guests in mind, right? We have we have other guests that verbally committed to appearing. So I mean, this it, should be fun. At least eight episodes worth, you know. So so it's going to be fun. So again. Um, if you made it this far, thank you. Right. Thanks for checking us out. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, I got nothing else. Dave, you got anything? I'm, I'm kind of hungry. I might go to Burger King. Yeah. Um, no, I just, uh, I had ribs and mac and cheese and uh, coleslaw. So I'm just, I'm probably going to go upstairs and just stare at the wall for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just, gonna, I'm probably going to shoot over to Burger King and uh, see what they got going on. Do they got those ghost whoppers now or are they all done with it? I don't know. Um, maybe. No, I'm not about to say it. it was, you know, I'll, maybe we could ask our guest that didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was where you're going with it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, God. He's going to kick my ass, isn't he? Um, and I had that footage to show, too. So, I mean, it sucks that I didn't get to show it. Yeah, next, next time. time. Next time. It'll work out. It'll all work, It'll work. out. Or it won't. Forget. It won't. It doesn't matter. I don't. I don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, last thing I guess is if you watch the pay per view before me, don't give me any spoilers. You know the rule: no spoilers. Oh, dude, you know I'm gonna be up to like three in the morning just watching it. So the, I think there's something else tonight too. So there was the GCW pay per view from a couple weeks ago. I said, you know, right before I went to sleep, I was like, don't give me any spoilers because I'm watching it tomorrow and then I get a text from you at four in the morning and you're just like, I'm so fucking pissed off right now. <laughs> was, that, was that the New Year's episode or the was that, that was a New Year's, was it? Or was that the the, the Hammerstein one? I, I think that was the Hammerstein one. Oh man. But you Nothing were like, was... like it was it was like 4.30 in the morning and like uh, it's a long, like a thick text from you just being like, I'm fucking pissed, I'm fucking it's bullshit and like <laughs> God, I'm trying to figure out what upset me. So, so much has upset me with GCW. That fucking New Year's show. I really hope we can get Akira or or Raver on to just talk about that insane ladder fucking thing they wrestled in. I would love to talk to both of them. So it would be fantastic, man. Hey, our uh, the way we're shooting, one of them is going to come on. So <laughs> One for two. I like it. Those are good odds, man. <laughs> All right, All right so well, I guess that's, that's it. it. All right, we're out of here. All right, peace.